this is an open letter to my, uh, my friends at the NPR uh, and the Saint Society. My one of my favorite movies of all times is The Bridge of Spies, uh, which you know I enjoyed it watching it multiple times. And beside the because beside the acting that is very good and the script that is very good and I like the whole concept of the central narrative of the whole movie which I'm sure is, comes from the same book a book of the same name I guess but the central narrative is, is 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 what I mostly enjoy about the bridge of spies the central narrative is simply put is none of us have a clean ass is it that this should come you know very natural that should come very easy to you mammals who use your ass to get rid of unwanted food remains it should be clear to you mammals that us mammals that nobody's asshole is clean that was the central that's the central theme of the bridge of spies and we better look at ourselves a little more try to keep our own assholes clean then trying to find uncleanliness with other people's assholes it's sort of like I mean the whole idea of being friends with Israel and Saudi Arabia both of whom were quite at ease about killing people Saudi Arabia just liquidated one of their own and Israel that no holds bar so they have they, they have an easy time in liquidating people and these are these are not you know you, you can't go without notice that you know Anglo-Saxon's asshole is the dirtiest of all but then they pick up a magnifying glass and start probing other national tribes and nations on this planet start probing with a magnifying glass the assholes of other nations on this planet and sort of like yeah your asshole is, doesn't seem very clean and yours neither and nobody's supposed to inspect Uncle Sam's ass <laughs> we should not notice that some of the most murderous regimes on the planet are you know stuck up <laughs> Uncle Sam's ass I mean you got Saudi Arabia in there and you had for a while you had Pinochet there and for a while you had that Franco there you had the South Af the apartheid government of South Africa there this whatever this is in Ukraine these are some of the most while systems around and they're all you know stuck up Uncle Sam's ass and nobody should look here's the thing we that the the, the, the beauty of Bridge of Spies stating that you know be humble about what you are and what you're, you're about be humble that was you know the theme of the bridge of spies because you don't know but in, in in your case in case of NPR I know that you know you know if you if you're not humble and you if you're not fair I know that you know 
you have the information and you're called journalists you're paid to do I'm not paid to do this shit follow the news but and you're paid to do to follow the news but then you come up with these programs or you pick these programs to give them more exposure from out there and you're you know, be, being even-handed and you, 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 you pick these programs from out there and being very even-handed at for example recently it was in the news that China has police stations in their embassies and that's a bad thing they have police station in their embassies overseas to question or what you how you folks call a debrief their own citizens from time to time if they believe their own citizens are you know selling the motherland let's put it that way so they have debriefing rooms and I'm sure they have some kind of prison some kind of police force because there there is a lot of Chinese citizens and the Chinese don't want they want to keep their ass clean as uh, let's put it that way so this came out as a you know uh, uh, an issue about the Chinese why 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 are they you know question maybe holding up imprisoning for short periods of time or holding up their own citizens in their own embassy and I was thinking to myself and and recently it was also came it was on NPR some program about some other shithole in the Middle East that kidnapped their own citizens in, the, in that case it's not they're just citizens they're like officers who have gone AWOL and not only gone AWOL but they have gone AWOL and left the country and there's some program to kidnap these folks and I'm thinking probably same, same way the Chinese have that program with uh, holding their own citizens and questioning them if those citizens are stupid enough to go to the Chinese embassy if they know they're I wouldn't visit my own embassy because I know shit that has come out of my mouth I, I'd be in trouble there but and if they do have a holding <laughs> if they do have a holding place I have a feeling I, I would you know <laughs> I don't want to think about it anyway the point is this The point is this, Bridge of Spies, you, you think and you dra dramatize this idea that countries kidnap their runaway officers from their military forces because they, they don't want the information that those officers have be compromised. That's, I guess that's kind of a, you know, something that everybody does kidnapping your own citizens maybe which Saudi Arabia has done many times but then Israel has kidnapped the citizens of other countries I mean here is what I'm saying my friends at the NPR you don't know about Guantanamo Bay you don't know about the black sites I'm sure you do it was part of a news cycle somewhere somehow it leaked out that there are these places all over Eastern Europe and North Africa and the Middle East Jordan Egypt and Poland comes to mind that there were these black sites that many 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 people with sus under suspicion were kidnapped and taken to those sites for questioning and imprisonment and then some of them were moved to Guantanamo so it's not only if those shed holes China and other shed holes kidnap their own citizens you kidnap other con corporations cit country citizens as we saw with the black size and still it's going on in Guantanamo Bay not only you you kidnap 
forget about your own citizens you kidnap other people other people's citizens other countries citizens and there is you know it's right in front of you so it's the whole idea that if we do it it's right but if they do it it's wrong <laughs> that's the whole you know it's, it's exactly the opposite of the message of bridge of spots no if you do it you should expect they them to do it i mean forget about kidnapping assassination Che Guevara, a citizen of Argentina, was assassinated by the orders of a citizen of Uncle Sam. So, you know, not only you kidnap citizens of other nations, you actually assassinate citizens of other nations that you don't like. You know, we just saw it. And you're, either you or your friends, you know, the whole Anglo-Saxon, NATO, North American, we are pink skins, we are should be on top. The whole contraption comes together and assassinates heads of state. He heads of not, not even the average citizen. Somebody shoots me right now, it's you know, it's an accident. Nobody will care much. But they go even after you know your own apparatus NPR goes after the heads of states. I mean, how many assassination attempts were made by your own folks at the CIA? Admission. How many attempts were made at the life of... Ch uh, they got Castro. 20, 20-some, 20, 20, 80, 60, 600. <laughs> and the ones that were successful were, you know, Che Guevara and... Uh, 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 Allende, remember that guy from Argentina, and it, it, it's sort of like you know, and, and even smaller, you know, these shed, 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 these these stupid people who you know went to join the <laughs> caliphate, they were easy, easy, easy game. No worries about it. Not only you know. They were our citizens, but they were the brine, of the brine, brown variety. So, it, you know, maybe three fifths, maybe two fifths. <laughs> A few bonuses. Anyway, and you know, they gave the the key to the guy with the middle name Hussein. So. It would look not too bad. Uh, so, my point is this that, folks, Bridge of Spies, not only you have done what you're describing, you're telling about China, that why are they holding up their citizens some from time to time in their embassy? Not only you have done that, you have done much, much, much worse. You have assassinated other. Just the idea of preemptive strike. We're going to invade or we're going to kill some of their leaders. The idea of invading, the idea of killing the readers, the, 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 you or your allies. If, if you keep saying we are of the same body, it's sort of like a lot of Americans have noticed uh, have come up with consider Israel as a parasite of the body of Uncle Sam, and some another faction is trying to sell Israel as a vital organ. So you know, these pro-war the pro-war camp considers Israel Israel as a pancreas or a, you know a kidney for the body that is. Uncle Sam, sort of like this is a very key organ, and other people are saying no, it's not really an organ. It's not per performing any function because they don't see the function of keeping a the Arabs on their toes 
as a vital function, but the empire does. You know, the idea of Israel is pay somebody to keep the Arabs on their toes or on their backs. Let's put it this way: to keep the Arabs on their toes, or in a in a more interesting way to describe Arabs to keep them on their back or on their heels as they say in English but more on their back with the with their you know legs stretched apart some to keep Arabs like in that position that's the function of Israel and that's what Israel is getting paid to do you know like you know as I said before like look up Rousey kind of kind of a deal you pay us we hit people <laughs> And, you know, and, and a lot of, you know, these folks are keep thinking that, you know, Uncle Sam's managers don't really want to do it. But, you know, Israelis are putting them in a, you know, a bind. There's no such thing. Ha <laughs> ha. It's a joke. There's no such thing. It, 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 it if, if. If Don Carleone stopped paying Luca Brausi, the fictitious characters from The Godfather, if Don Carleone stops paying Luca Brausi, Luca Brausi just goes and finds a decent factory job. The idea is the problem is Don Carleone wants to pay Luca Brausi wants to pay because look up is performing a function a group is seeing Israel as a parasite to the body is saying no they're not performing any function yes they're not performing any good function they are scaring the Arabs out of Asia and into Europe screwing up the European demographics and North American demographics not only they're, they're not scaring the Arabs, yes, once upon a time when those, if those when, when the technology was such that those population could not leave their shed holes, you know, boats were not so common, you could have gone and put Israel over there to keep the Arabs on their heels or on their backs and not, not to have to hear about it anymore. But since, you know, boats have become accessible to more and more people it's a common artifact that people can purchase it it that your bully there the guy who's supposed to keep the arabs on on their ass is pushing all these immigrants up north it's both bad for the immigrants and both for, and bad for the native population so the whole Israel, whatever it used to be, whatever purpose it served, now it's just screwing things up by pushing all these Arabs to North, to Europe, into Europe. Some of them literally they push off the land, and others, who who the hell wants to live in a country that's up on the, on its back, which Jordan and Egypt and Syria and Lebanon. Iraq, they all have been kept on their back or pushed on their back. Iraq was okay until it was pushed on its back and raped a few times. Salute. You either keep the Arabs on their back or you push them on their backs. And now it's the next one in line. And the, the Iranians are left. We have to, you know, Get them on their backs and open their legs. And PR disappointed. Disappointed that the whole idea of separation of powers is no more. You know. There is no separation of powers. There is no NPR is independent. You know, no. There is no, you know, BBC is independent. No. I mean, 
the way you go about changing changing the atmosphere or the milieu as you go about changing the milieu and keep finding new enemies for the populace to throw stones at you know it's just not only it's not kosher it's just not logical you're creating more immigrants is going to go up your own asses that's the result of trying to execute 19 18th 17th century european style colonialism in 21st century when you know inflatable boats and inflatable rafts and you know boat technology is fiberglass boat technology is almost everywhere and people can build them get on it and visit champs <laughs> I mean, you're shooting yourself in the foot at this point with this imperialist ideas, like Mr. Uh, Mr. Jeffries said. You know, it, the rudder has stuck. The rudder, which basically he meant uh, the the State Department or foreign policy or the whole perspective of the upper echelon of the governing body, their whole perspective as stuck like a rudder in a boat and do you do you do you see that inflatable boats are easy to obtain do you see that the idea of oh we are going to enhance our border security you want to become a gated community a, a, a more secure gated community folks if you have to live in a gated community that means you're divorced from reality if you choose to live in a gated community it means you have chosen to be divorced from reality in other words you're living in a tribe if you have to keep yourself from the race rest of the tribal members by multiple layers of walls and armed men there is something wrong in that environment you know there is something wrong and if you can't feel safe outside of a gated community then something has gone really wrong in that land Everybody needs personal protection. Only those who are worth it need personal protection. The rest of you motherfuckers, eat dirt and die. But my point is this, you can't, by not recognizing, back to the point of Bridge of Spies, by not recognizing that your ass if if not dirtier than the other side is just as messy you keep participating in the propaganda keep you know magnifying glass on other people's asses without any inter you know any notice or re any recognition i mean if you do recognize that Guantanamo Bay is basically locking up citizens of other kidnapping and locking up citizens of other countries and why Guantanamo Bay because we don't have enough evidence to take them to mainland and take them to court and put them in jail either we don't have enough evidence or we believe these guys have enough information that may cause future harm so we're going to lock them up where in somewhere that habeas corpus doesn't apply this is something all npr reporters probably know should know so if you if you know you have done such an act unless such an act is corrected you can't start 
you know, looking up other people's asses. If you know that thing about your own ass, you see, you, you, if you know something stuck up your ass, you go and take it out. You see, you go wash your ass. You, you don't, that normal people, you, you don't say that, no, 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 I, my ass is very dirty, but the first thing I'm going to do is pick up a magnifying glass, look, for, look at other people's asses. Force them to get naked so I can look at their asses. See if their asshole is clean. That a normal person doesn't do that. The normal person says, no, no, no. I have this issue with my asshole. It's called Guantanamo Bay. I clean it and then and and tell all about the black sides and you know comes out come up with some kind of punishment for those who consider torture as enhanced interrogation technique. Just by giving it an exotic name, they decided they, they can sanctify it. Do you see where I'm going with this? It's as a reporter, folks, uh, as NPR, your first job is to clean your own ass. End. End of story, that's it. That's your first job. You don't move from Guantanamo Bay one inch until it's resolved. Then you don't move from the homeless issue. That's an, another, you know, part of the dirty ass. You don't move from the homeless issue until it's resolved. But you just, just fly over the issue that you have you have it's your ass that is dirty you just fly over that and show us other asses and try to you know imagine that imagine the hypocrisy imagine that the the funny you know the the funny situation in which somebody with a very dirty ass and just smelling and wet and flies are all flying trying to explain to the world that that boy over there has a dirty ass because he just you know did poo poo it's, it's just it's just like oh god what are you talking about if he just shed his pants you've been shedding your pants for apparently since this morning for a long time it's, and you do hear this hypocrisy coming out and you're like, oh God, do you guys even listen to yourself? Who, who writes these scripts? I mean, who, who, who writes these scripts that, yeah, yeah, we should go after North Korea now and badmouth North, North Korea. I'm sorry, does not, if North Korea pays you, would that solve the problem? I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't think, you know, whoever the fuck is in charge in that shithole, I, I don't think they mind if they have to, if you, NPR provides a bank account, and if, they, if you tell them to, you, you, if you put some money in that bank account, we stop, you know, bad-mouthing you and trying to wipe you off the map. I mean, just give them a bank account, maybe it works. Let's be frank, it's not your bank account, but at the end of the day, the, the beef that Uncle Sam's managers have with a country like North Korea is that they are not paying their bills. It's not about democracy, because Saudi Arabia is not democracy either. But Saudi Arabia is paying their bills, buying treasury bills, North Korea is not. They're not buying treasury bills and they're not doing this and they're not doing that and they're not standing on their head either. And they're certainly not taking it up the ass. So my point is this. That's the thing. Eventually it comes down to that. If they are willing to play ball with, let's say, BlackRock and Goldman Sachs, 
then you know put some money in the coffers of these corporations then suddenly they become good guys and they tell you to go say some good things about North Korea I'm sure it works that way because they're bad because they're not paying their bills you know protection money That's the thing about Bridge of Spies is that it shows that when a couple of intelligent people get together and try to be honest with each other, they realize, pretty soon they realize they all, their asses are all dirty and therefore they have to somehow cooperate to coexist cooperate to coexist but you know if, if you think you own the rest of the planet if you think your race should be ruling the planet then the whole, whole idea of let's cooperate and coexist go, goes right out the window it becomes colonialism you know cooperate and coexist is the opposite of the colonialism military base and pay up cooperate and coexist military base and pay up pay your bills and this is the thing that you know you look at NPR one one everyone anyone looks at NPR and expects to see that kind of honesty it expects to hear that kind of honesty that yes yes did I tell you, like, somebody says this story about some, about China, somebody should come and say, right, you know, of course, we have the same issue. Uh, we have blocked people up for many years without actually charging them with anything for Julian Assange. And, yeah, so, in another words, if you don't want to do that, every time you, you, pick your magnifying glass and look other people's asshole if you don't want to every time have to mention that your own asshole is also dirty if you don't want to do that then you stop picking on other assholes you see what I'm saying then you stop doing that you say hey I don't want to have to every time show my own ass how dirty my ass is so I'm not going to pick on other people's ass let's you know mind our own business and try to clean our own ass this is how a producer in the NPR should look at the matter and say no we have no before actually sending out the story or picking the story they should actually look at and say oh how will this look, make us look like people with a lot of chutzpah yeah, we don't want to look like people with a lot of chutzpah. We want to look like people with a lot of intelligence. And we do, we do see the hypocrisy in this matter. So we are not going to even air such a story. Because it, it looks very bad. But they don't do that. Producers are, they don't answer to even NPR. Many of them this is their second job their first job is you know with the FBI or the CIA and they they come in and you know again the problem with these agencies is that they have tunnel vision they see in details or myopia or tunnel vision they see in details up close in, in a very in very close details but they don't have no peripheral vision and morality lies where you have peripheral vision so none consider being moral in their pursuit of their objectives Oh, those who pick stories and 
tell news. You should really consider that people actually, you know, they weren't born yesterday. They have lived a little and they have seen all the news cycles and people can recognize hypocrisy when they hear it. And they should actually not produce or not pick those stories that, you know, reek of hypocrisy. If you ever did reeks of hypocrisy, on its own, it is what it is, it's art. But picking it is just reeks of hypocrisy. Why do it? If you know you have done worse. I mean, talk about if they kidnap their citizens, you know, Uncle Sam's managers, what they manage, how they manage it, has one of the highest uh, rates of citizens being shot by officers, by mistake, the highest rate in the world. And I don't blame the officers because, you know, if you're living, if you're, you're, you're a police officer where guns are available and widely distributed you're you're going to be jittery you're going to shoot first ask questions later so i don't blame the officers it's just that so you as a result of everything uncle sam's rangers have one of the highest murder rates in the world murder of people by officers jittery officers so if those countries go and kidnap those office not only citizens but off citizens officers who escaped before their before their obligations was finished according to I guess a contract they signed I think I think they have signed a contract everywhere in the world, in, even in Uncle Sam's land. I think there's a contract you sign that you agree to stay, stay four or five years, something like that. Even as a you know soldier, officers, if they have gone to the officer university or if that, if they have gone to that, I'm sure they are obligated to stay longer. So, not only. You're saying that those those shitholes kidnap these people who are under some kind of contract and they skip town and skip country. But we not not only we have the right to kidnap our own people, we have the right to kidnap citizens of other countries. We actually right shoot a lot of our citizens more often than not, more than any other country in the world. But somehow they got a dirty ass. I I I, I suggest everybody in NPR please watch the Bridge of Spies. It's free and it's on YouTube. On YouTube it's free. Please watch Bridge of Spies and try to understand that staying within that theme makes a lot more sense it's just you know picking apart behavior of people from cultures you don't understand from languages you don't understand picking on their cultural anomalies it's very easy Picking on behaviors that you do much worse than them. It's just madness. If you have done worse, why would you bring up what they're doing? Because, you know, first clean your own ass. So you don't, so you wouldn't look like a hypocrite and you know everybody 
believe would believe that you are an intelligent entity who actually cleans their own ass first then looks at other people's asses any intelligent entity any intelligent entity from monkeys to reptiles to everybody cleans their own ass first 